Hello everybody. So we're playing with our cute bot here and one of the advantages that it brings us is that it has some extra pinouts for us that over here we can add to servos and over here we can just add something on pin one and pin two and then back here behind the micro bit we can drop a couple things something onto pin 1920 which is, if I believe, it's also the the I squared C um, connections, but I could be wrong on that. Um, so normally in the front here we would be plugging in our distance sensor, and then purportedly we could plug another I squared C thing here, and then another one here. Um, now I did try to actually plug one in here, and I must have messed up with the connections because it wasn't working. So I went back here to where pin 1920 voltage and ground are and got something working there. The kind of things you could add, um, like right now, I have this little OLED screen hooked up. It needs voltage, ground, SCL, and SDA, which are pins 19 and 20. You could also add a little LCD array, which again, needs four things, ground, voltage, SDA, and SCL. Both of those have extensions in the make code. You look, Google, you search for um, 1602, or you search for OLED. Um, so again, we can add a couple of servos. I just added one. Uh, this is just pin one and pin two. So I mean, I can add a whole other set of NeoPixels if I want, or I could add like buttons. Um, just any kind of input output that you can think of for pin one and pin two. So let's turn this puppy on and let's see what I got going. So I've got it uh, turning light red. I got the servo moving. It switches to light green. If I press the button, something should happen. It went yellow, that went rainbow. And we should have, we should have a message. Why am I not getting, the message was just there. What did I, what have I messed up? Oh, really? So, of course, when I make the video, the message doesn't show up. It doesn't matter. Oh, it just said hello. But it showed you that it, that it was working, so I don't know why it's not working. Um, I have t two different button presses in there in the code. Let's look. Wait, give it another moment. Hmm. Yeah, that should show up right now. When that goes rainbow, when one of these goes yellow, that should have a message on it. And I don't know why it's not doing it. But so there we can add some things you were wondering about. Um, I mean, there's a whole, I threw a whole bunch of different code in here. Let's talk about two things. First of all, though, if you have an OLED or in a 1602 an LCD see it's a 1602 you just click on that add that and it gives you a set of oh since I don't have the 1602 on here it's not there so let's look 1602 there's only one of them so here we go maker bit LCD um, we have to put in the connect and then we put in, you know, what we want to say on that uh, 1602 means 16 bit, 16 characters, two lines. And we're, what we're going to write. And then we can clear it. And then here's the OLED. We have to initialize it. I think we also have to turn it on. And then we can do a whole bunch of different things with it, putting dots, drawing lines, um, writing messages. And it should just do that, it should just say hello. Uh, so those are those two extra extensions. And interesting to think about for logic. Um, if you wanna talk about logic now, coding logic. See, I've got these two commands here. One's the micro bit on pin one pressed. And the others in the forever says if pif pin one is pressed, 
interesting is is it basically says the same thing, right? If I press pin one, do this. If I press pin one, do this kind of thing. Um, if if it triggers during the if statement, everything's going to go blue. If it triggers elsewhere, things are going to go yellow. And because of the way things run on, on code, um, the blue one doesn't happen that often. It's really the yellow one. Because amazingly enough, if I want this to trigger this if statement, the pin's got to be pressed right before it gets to that line of code. If I press it when the line of code is down here, it doesn't see it. But this one does. Like, it's always looking for it. So, that's, you know, sometimes you got to consider, you know, which way to make things happen uh, in the code. So, again, there's some things you can add to the CubeBot. You don't have to always, always make it run like a car kind of thing. You can just have it be stationary and run different things. Like those motors could turn, I don't know, spin eyeballs around. It could uh, spin um, a, um, a lighthouse, a light for a lighthouse. I mean, there's all sorts of different things. You don't have to make them uh, actually just drive. Because, again, these holes here are Lego size. So you can build up around. Um, I'm assuming this one gets some standoffs to add some Legos, you know, to here kind of thing. So it's always nice when we can build. And there's nothing down there we can add on. Um, when we can build onto things. So there you go. Some more, some more ideas with the cute bot. Enjoy.